everybody. Thanks for tuning in to us. I'm so glad that you have stopped and took your time. You've scrolled the internet or you've actually looked us up. However you got here, I'm just glad you're here. We've got one of our services, one of our words that we have given, one of our songs uh, we put out here, and now we're together. The reason we do this is because we feel the Lord has put messages on our hearts, words on our hearts that we can help you. But the main thing is to glorify Him. So thank you for coming by and spending a little time with us. I, I promise, uh, don't just start and stop. Sometimes you're going to catch up to me. You're going to catch up to uh, everything. But if you'll put the time in, I think you'll find that God's got a word for you. And we'll be back in just a few minutes with some other things. And, and so just sit down, hold on, and let God bless you. Amen. 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 I, you may be seated. Amen. I, when Jesus was getting ready to leave, he told them what he told them before. He said, I want you to go back and wait on the promise of the fall. Amen. He said, I want you to go and I want you to wait till you receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now, he had grieved in them for three and a half years. He even grieved on them in one place and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. He had poured into them. His blood was on them. He anointed these disciples in this early church. But he said, I want you to go, and I want you to wait till you receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, there was two purposes of the Holy Ghost. And had two main pur purposes. He, over, he said, I'm going to leave you, but let not your hearts be troubled. Amen. If I go away, I'm going to send you the comfort. Yes. Amen. Amen. Someone was talking about this world a little while ago and how wild it is and how wicked it is. I do not know how other Christians make it through that does, do not have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Come on. Amen. Amen. The Holy Ghost is our comfort. Yes. Amen. Jesus said, I can no longer be with you physically and walk with you, but I will send the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. And he will come.
Amen. Of the Holy Ghost that I want to preach on tonight. He said, and ye shall receive power. Come on. Amen. Amen.
He asked him for some money, and this is what Peter did say. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ. They rise up and walk, and he went, what are you living in Christ? Ha! You're talking about miracles. The establishment of miracles. Amen. He, they, they were healing the man. Amen. It got so great that when Peter walked by, that the shadow from Peter, that the Holy Ghost shadow was killing people. Woo! I don't know about y'all down here. We still believe in prayer handkerchiefs. Amen. Amen. And over the last couple of months, too, they haven't left the preachers back in the hospital. And that's part of the problem. We can't defeat this thing. Amen. If the preachers can't lay hands upon them, I'm not going to hear no skill preachers. So, amen. And so said, oh, y'all can't do that. Well, we walked into the leper colonies, didn't we? Amen. We have walked into places where there's been all kinds of dysentery and malaria, and we lay hands on them. Amen. What's the difference between Corona? Man, 
man. Amen. Amen. Get way ahead of myself. Judgment. Judgment is coming. Amen. That's what happened over those five years. All those people, man, I'm telling you, you're talking about how the church, how would you like to be in the early church? Come on. How would you think about it? I've been to Israel, and I know it's a dusty place, and it's a little bit different. Amen. But could you imagine? Can you imagine coming to church in another state and, and, and expecting somebody to be healed today? Come on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You come to church and you're expecting somebody's just going to get saved today. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You come to church and you're just, you don't know what to expect, but you know something good's about to happen. Yeah. 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 Amen. Man, most churches today felt like going to a funeral. Come on. <laughs> Jerusalem. 
And they were all scattered. They were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and the Samaria. And if you read on down through there, that's not the only time it's mentioned that they were scattered. Said that Stephen, Stephen uh, said that Saul was making havoc of the church, in verse number four, and they were scattered abroad. I will say something. In the last 30 years, I do not believe that the professing church has been doing what God has called us to do. Wow. I'm going to say something else. I'm not tearing down anybody's ministry, but these huge ministries of men are not God. Wow. And, and this is not Tom Snyder Ministries. It's Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 That song you were singing to that brother right at the end of it, at the end of the praise, man, what words. There's another song kind of like that says, uh, uh, I, I don't want to leave a legacy, only Jesus. Yeah. When I first heard that, I thought, man, that can't be right. Everybody wants to, somebody to talk about. No, when, you, when it really comes down to it, it's let the world see Jesus in me. Amen. 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 But this modern over the last 30 years of what the church has turned into. Man, we're comfortable, folks. we got AC in the summer. we got heat in the winter. we got cushion carpets. And then we got padded pews and padded chairs. Our music, it sounds like angels, choirs. And, then, and, the, and the preachers have got so much education in their words. And then are oratorical. They're just beautiful. And we just stay inside that in our own front door. Yeah, come on, come on. I'm, I, I'm, I'm a spectator here in this area. Andrew's been here a little while. And Andrew, when he moved to Texas, I, I told him what we do in West Virginia. And his dad would not work quite like that here in Texas. And I said, what do you mean? He said, they just don't seem, the churches don't seem to come together. They just don't seem to, it's every man for himself, every church for himself. They build their own, come on. Yeah, and they might work together. Yeah, come on. This is not the will of God. No. Amen. 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 It's not the will of God. It shouldn't be the assemblies of God over here, and the church of God over here, and the Southern Baptist over here, and, and, and the other church over here. No, 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 it's one church. Right. It's, it's, it's one church. And we have, we've gotten to our own little cliques and we've gotten to ourselves. And, and, and I think it's a shame that the assembly of God can't fellowship with the church of God or a church of God can't fellowship with the Southern Baptists. Do you love Jesus? Amen. I think we're getting ready to come to a time where titles aren't going to mean anything. Amen. Amen. Five years. But when the persecution They left Jerusalem. Yeah. And some of them went to Antioch. Yeah. And so they never even heard of Antioch before. God takes an, an old, uh, how do I want to describe Saul? Amen. Man, he's about as mean and grisly as they come. Everybody's scared of him. God knocks him down on the road to Damascus. And boom! Amen. People are fleeing everywhere. Yeah. They're scattering left and right. Amen. And God's going, and I'm telling you, for church, there's a scattering coming. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Come on. There is a scattering coming. See, we have it. We've been building inside of ourselves. We expect everybody to come to us. Oh, there you go. Come on. Amen. I love the, the announcement about the prayer meeting in the parking lot. Come on. Oh. Amen. Uh, 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 how can you fish? You know that fish? Stand up. <laughs> Amen. Do you go through the holes that's all been fished out? Come on. I've got a couple of fishermen in my church. Now, I, I go to the rock, sit down on the rock, and wait for the fish to come to me. <laughs> no, not too good. Amen. But, I, but I, 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 I'm so fat and sassy, I ain't going to put somebody else's fish. <laughs> but if you really like to fish, you don't go to a hole that's been 
fished out. Amen. 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 You got to keep your waders on. Amen. You might have to cut some brush. Amen. But you get to a place, a new place. You get to a place that hasn't been fished for a while. You get back down and sometimes you go to work. Y'all have what we call native trout down there. Amen. Native fish. In, in West Virginia, we don't have much of a left. But I lived in a place years ago when Andrew was born. We had on the property, it was right before the Spruce Knoll, which is the highest mountain in West Virginia. Um, there was a native trout stream right on that property. Now I fished a little bit growing up because we had to ask a couple sunfish and a little bit, but not really known to be a fisherman. But I found out about them native trout, and it's kind of like, you know, getting that big buck, you know, it's kind of pride if you can catch a native trout. And I found out you just don't walk up. Literally, you don't walk up. You, you scare the fish. They'll, they'll hide. They see your shadow. They hear you. Hear you and, and, they, and they go away. You just don't go up. And, and I, it took me a little while to learn. You actually get down and you crawl. And you just drop your lines or just ease it out into the water. And you, and you just and you just wait. you got to be. You know, and sometimes you gotta go to find a native trout stream like that. You go back in the mountains and hollers and go down. Man, there was a couple places I took the machete and cut to get to where I was going. It worked. And I found out why I didn't like fishing so much. <laughs> Amen. But we, this is the problem. The church, the modern church, is uh -oh. something happened. In the 90s, the end of the 80s, something happened. Now, I told you at the beginning of this message, the time, there were five years when the God scattered and the church was being born. In the United States, go back to 1948. Does anybody can tell me in history what happened in 1948? Israel. 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 If you allow me, I'll just to make the math easier. Uh, 1950 to 2020 is 70 years. 72 years. If you go back and look at the history of the modern church in the last 70 years. Now, Jesus was born somewhere like right on the other side of the AD. Okay? And there's like a three-year period there when you look at it. Uh, and he was born there. So if you go back to, if, if, to make it simple, 1920 to 2020. If you would have been alive in 1920, churches were popping up all over America. Brush Harbor meetings, camp meetings, camp revivals. The assemblies of God were coming through their strength. The church of God, uh, they've been scattered. They were coming through their strength. This was all during World War II, and it was, it was just powerful. Then in the 50s came something called the Latter Rain. And in the 1950s, there was things happening. There was miracles. I've read <coughs> and actually talked to a few people about A.A. Allen. And I know this story. Yeah. But I'm telling you, the miracles were documented. Amen. Yep. Uh, the miracles of A.A. Allen, R.W. Shambach was one of his yeah. young Amen. protégés. Uh, 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 the Jack Coes. Jack Coes was, was a Texas boy, if I remember right. And they had revivals in the, in the 1950s old Roberts. The meetings, the tent revivals that came along were unbelievable. And then in the 1960s, when all of America is beginning to not realize what the Constitution stood for, in the 1960s in the church, Jimmy Swagger and, and some of these other great preachers and some churches were starting to rise up. And the assemblies, God, the church of God, they all of a sudden left the other side of the tracks and came right to the good side of town. And their churches began to build, and they began to grow. And, and, and people, the then it wasn't long, and you had PTL, uh, PBN, T 
Television, 700 Club. Church just went uptown. Do I have to do the We stayed right here in our confines. And we got fire and fire. In the last 10 to 15 years, something's called flimsy grace. We call it greasy grace. Come on. You, you, it's come to the Pentecost. See, we Pentecostal folks would never ever believe in Calvinism or eternal security. So they just changed it because they were living in sin and they called it flimsy grace. And we brought it into our Pentecostal churches. We brought it into our, our independent churches. We brought it into our full gospel churches. And now we tell people, you can take a little drink. You can take a little snort. You can, uh, and, and you can switch. If you're tired of your life, you can switch with someone else's life for a little while. You, you can do this. You can do that. You all think I'm crazy, but it's true. You know it's true. A lot of churches get hit by it. And by it. In fire. David Wilkerson said in 1990, I believe it was, that he saw a plague come uh -oh. to America and that it would start in New York. Come on. And that everything would shut down. Yeah. Can I get down here with you, Nick? Yeah, come on. There's been preachers in every generation. There's 7,000 knees that have not bowed to death. God, God has raised preachers up, Christians, Holy Ghost filled people in every generation. And it's been passed. I don't know why. And this week, see, I, I believe in prophetic cycles. I, 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 I do. Agree with Perry Stone in that, and I do believe we are in a prophetic cycle. And in my personal life, this week I lost two of my mentors. All my mentors are gone. See, Timothy needed Paul, yes, he did. and I was so blessed in my life. I had I had five mentors in my life that taught me different things. They all of them were holiness Pentecostal preachers. They taught me how to visit hospitals. They taught me uh, doctrine, sound doctrine, how to stand in the Word. They taught me how to evangelize our giving. And this week I lost two of them. I have, I have no mentors left. Somebody wrote and said that I've become the mentor. I don't, I don't know. But I know, I sense. This week I lost... I lost one that was 96, I lost one that was 89, and one that was 81. And those three preachers there, two of them were Pentecost, one was an old-time church of the brother. I can't imagine the wisdom and the miracles and the, that left with them. I'm just telling you, it, it just makes me... Yeah. Amen. And we're living in this time. And I wasn't alive in 1950. I wasn't born until 1965. My grandfather preached all over the world. I heard stories. But I was, I was, I was alive enough, long enough to get my foot back there. And I've been around long enough, Andrew, to pass it on where we're going. And I'm somewhere right here, right now. And everybody wants to know, because now I guess I'm the old time preacher, I'm what's left. And for what for good for whatever it's worth, I guess I'm it. For people like me. And people come up to me, people questions, what's happening? What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? What, what's happening? In January, I preached the message before all this started. God will take care of his Abrahams. Come on. Yep. Amen. But it's lots. But the lots, not so much. Yep. Yep. And then in the middle of March, God gave me another message. God is looking for his Rebecca's. He's going to call us Rebecca's. They took, she took the place of Lot and Sarah. And now God's giving me one. We're getting ready to move. 
And listen, you can you can do just like the pastor said. You can get up tomorrow morning and go out to the parking lot and pray. Or God can take something out of your life and you can get up and pray. Well, I'm telling you, if you're going to serve God, and make it through this thing and receive your eternal prize, you're going to have to move. Come on. Come on. You're no longer going to be able to stand on the Sunday school teacher or on the deacon's uh, coattail, on the pastor's coattail. You're going to have to get your knees back where they need to be. Come on. Amen. Amen. And you're going to have to go out and say, well, oh, I don't feel qualified. I don't feel like I'm ready. Amen. None of them didn't either. Amen. You're going to have to go. Someone said today, the word God, the first two letters is go. <laughs> You're going to have to go. Yeah. I'm looking at this beautiful church tonight. I know there's a whole bunch of little ones out there. But you guys, in this part of Texas, you're going to have to go. Something. When I was his age, if somebody would have offered me that, amen, I would have, you know, $50. Oh, yeah. To just go invite somebody to church, bring them to church. Come on. I, I invited 10 people and said, I'll give you $2 a piece. <laughs> we got all kinds of things. Come on. We got good of here. I sense and feel. God's going to be down here this weekend. And what you all had the last two nights, sometimes God just puts his finger on church. I have not a clue why God chose back to Valley, West Virginia. I want to tell you, some of you have been on our YouTube, seen our Facebook page and stuff like that. We touched the world. We're with the church. That's, this is a good Sunday morning for us. Amen. Now, we've got more people outside, but inside our church, we just hold church. You cannot, uh, we're just farmers. I don't think i got a doctor in the bunch. No lawyers in the bunch. Yeah. Just average, blue-collar workers. Uh, I tell my teachers, we've got, we got church full bus drivers. Come on. we got like seven or eight school bus drivers. Yeah. Amen. I'm on. Come on. And God's taken that little church in the last few years. And all the glory goes to God, but he'll tell you, I don't know how many churches we've built, how many orphanages we've built. We have literally sent hundreds of thousands of dollars to India, to Uganda, to Haiti. Amen. 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 And the only thing I know is sometimes God just puts his finger in the film, your prophetic track. I'm just going into the prophetic. God showed me years ago. There was angels in our church. When I was in India in 2003, he was just a little boy. I think I've done preaching. I just wanted to talk to you. He was, home. He, he was just a little boy. He wasn't even close to preaching. I what were you, 10? 10 years old. And uh, he was worried about his daddy. And the same night that he was so worried about me and praying for me, and he got his grandmother up and she was praying for me. God showed me visions of angels. And I saw this huge angel. And he had his one foot in the continent where India was. And then the other foot he had right on top of Dr. Valley Church. And I, I saw that. But just a few years later, God showed me that there were angels around that church. Now, it doesn't matter whether you believe it or not. I know it's true. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I, I believe in angels. I, I believe they're angels of God's purpose. I believe they are strategic. I believe they are things from the one in the heaven. And I'm going to tell you right now, our angels are working in, over, in overtime right now. Amen. Amen. That's why this Holy Ghost is so important. Amen. And God showed me that little Baptist Valley Church, the last, well, it was last year, at this time, I uh, had you come home. And uh, I stayed and went to Uganda. And one night, God woke me up. And God showed me angels springboarding in my vision off of the church. Now, 
People in our church, this is the truth, people have been coming to our church and they've been catching glimpses of angels. And I haven't told you that. Angels in our church. From Jeremiah, a friend of ours, he's working in the church for the computer every day because he can't get a computer. He's that's his job. Twice he's seen angels. Others have come in and have caught angels in our church. Look up to them. There they are. I've seen them on different occasions. And God showed me springboard. Now, I didn't understand until just this past week. I just, okay, they're springboarding. It's, it was like they would jump from one place and they would use Patrick Bellis Church. And by the way, we're in a building program. And God's blessing us. And, I mean, physically, we're, we're, we're building and everything. And we're raising our roof. I guess we're giving them a higher step and step. I don't know. But God showed me this week. That the reason that they're using, see, our, our church is about an hour and a half from the White House. Our church is about an hour and a half from the Washington Monument, from the Capitol Hill. And I never, the God showed me this week, he said that they need that extra bounce because the fire is so strong when they go in there. For someone that's praying for somebody that needs it. But I said all that to say this. I sense that this church, at this time, on the timeline, is important for Texas. Amen. 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 God has put the, this is for this season, for this time. Amen. God is it is strategically, there is a scattering. Getting ready to take place. And this area is going to become really, really important. I, 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 just, want to, I just want to minister to you. Quit fussing with somebody. Amen. Start loving them. Amen. And work together for Jesus. Yeah. Amen. 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 Because I believe with all my heart that God doesn't just want another church. He's got plenty of churches. He wants a Holy Ghost filled church. Amen. Don't be so bothered about the building. Come on. Be bothered about the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hey, everybody, this is Pastor Tom Snyder again, thanking you so much for spending time with us here at Back Creek Valley Full Gospel Church. And we appreciate our time together. If you've liked what you've listened to, if you've enjoyed, maybe you got questions, comments, maybe you didn't like it. We still would like to hear from you. You can always check us out on, of course, our YouTube channel. You can check us out on Facebook at Back Creek Valley Full Gospel Church. My own personal page, Tom Snyder on Facebook. You can find us uh, in those places. If you want to correspond, our address is 131 Norman Silver Lane, Hedgesville, West Virginia, 25427. And that's Back Creek Valley Full Gospel Church. So thanks so much for spending time with us. Till we meet again, remember, friends, this first day of the rest of your life, go live it for the Lord.